how to know if it's definitely over? Is your ex gone for good? Is the question I will answer today in this video. You might have a lot of questions right now after a breakup and have been in your shoes before, wondering about whether there's any chance to get back with the the person you love the most. This is what I'm going to explain in seven points and you'll see as usual, I'll provide you some toolkit and some actions that you can do. Listening and watching is great. Doing is better. I'll see you after the jingle. I get my ex back.com. Everyone deserves a second chance. So first of all, um, how long has it been? Uh, the breakup has it been yesterday. Was it yesterday? Was it a year ago? Have you done no contact properly? If you don't know what is no contact, have a look. I will put a video somewhere here. <laughs> Are you still begging? Are you still pleading? Are you still apologizing, putting yourself uh, at a lower value um, to your ex? You have to understand that an ex can always come back. With few conditions that I will mention on number two, but an ex can always come back. If you think about it, you were together and both of you wanted this to work. You're here because something didn't work. You're here because there's probably something you have to change and work on, but you have to realize that your ex wanted to work at some point. And it depends in terms of the length of, or when was the breakup. But as the times goes on, your chances get smaller. And so you have to understand that there's a period of time after the breakup where I would advise you to do no contact, to give yourself um, some space, to give your ex some space. And after, let's say the three months mark, six, three to six months mark, this is when you have <laughs> to get in touch with them if they didn't reach out. And this is when basically I do most of my work with my clients is um, some of them, I help them during no contact on how to cope with that. Uh, feeling of being uh, alone and also working on themselves uh, and being the best version of themselves. And a lot of my other clients or the same clients, I help them when it's time to contact their ex, how you communicate, how you convey that message, how you change the narrative. But to do that, you need to make sure that you didn't do a lot of mistakes. And I also uh, did another video previously in, uh, in this series of video about the mistakes you should avoid <clears throat> when you are in no contact. Second thing you can assess to know if you have any chance to get back with your ex is to take the quiz. It's something that I put together for you. It's totally free. It takes literally two minutes. And the idea it will assess um, most of the things we'll cover in that video. <laughs> So watch the video, but if you don't want to watch the video, just take the quiz and you have a score basically. Uh, if it's above 30, honestly, you're amongst the people who don't necessarily need my help. If you're between 15 and 30, it's likely that you can get back together if you do the right things and if you avoid some mistakes. Um, if you're less than 15, it means that it's less likely, if not, not likely at all, that you get back with your ex. And I'd rather um, move on and do something else uh, of your life because life is too short than trying to fight the wrong battles. So have a look. Hopefully you're above 15, which means that there's a chance for you to get back with your ex. The third thing you need to assess is whether your ex is angry at you. Um, you know, if the if the if the the breakup was nasty and, and and with a lot of insults, maybe you lied to them, maybe you cheated on them. Um, extreme case, maybe you stole them money. What you have to understand is, as ugly as a breakup can be, time and space uh, will decrease the anger. When we think about uh, something painful, when we look at back at some, I don't know, you broke your arm. Um, a year ago, it's a different kind of pain than when you uh, break your arm right now. <laughs> of course, and it's the same with the relationship. Those negative thoughts, those resentment and, 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 um, and anger would decrease with time. So the worst breakup, of course, the longer it takes for your ex to forgive you, to uh, forget about those drama. Um, and if you went um, too far, if you crossed the line, you have to send one message to apologize. Don't send 20 messages. Just You just mention that you apologize for your behavior. You understand the decision. And that's it. 
Okay, if you need any tips on what you should send messages, give me a, give me a call and I'll, I'll let you know. Mixed messages, uh, you receive a lot of, um, you're in touch with your ex, um, but you see some the classic hot and cold messages. Sometimes um, late at night, drunk messages, sometimes they call you, uh, you have a missed call at 2 a.m. Um, one day they are very affectionate and very close, the other day they retract and they're very distant. This type of behavior means that they keep those emotions to themselves and they don't want to open up because they are scared. They are scared of maybe the drama of that breakup, maybe that you're not ready to get back together, maybe that they really got hurt at that breakup and they don't want to um, re, uh, restart where with this type of, of relationship. Maybe they are scared that they are actually the problem and they can't make it work. Maybe they really deeply believe that they are not good for you. It depends on the personality, it depends on your situation, it depends on your case, it depends on your ex. But these signals, regardless of your, uh, who your ex is and, and, and her or his personality, these signals means that there is an internal fight. They are fighting with emotions. At the same time, they want to get back with you and the other time they're like, no, it's too painful, it's too scary. And they have this inner fight, which means that there is a chance if you convince the negative voice that this belief that this story is the wrong one, that they are misinterpreting the situation, that they are actually looking at, the, at yourself from the wrong perspective. And you can change that perception. Five mistakes since the breakup. <laughs> you can take them. <laughs> Getting angry, contacting them, spamming them, being constantly calling them, not accepting that they say, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Begging, upsetting your ex, making things uh, so they react, uh, apologizing all the time, getting a revenge. I don't know, maybe you sleep with their best friend, things like that. Hopefully you didn't tick all those boxes because what is very important for you, if you uh, want to know if you can get back with your ex, then if you want to know if your ex is gone for good, most of the time, the mistakes, and quit me on that, most of the time, the mistakes that are made after the breakup are the ones that are actually preventing you from getting back with your ex. So it's really right now, after the breakup, that it's a make or break situation. Before the breakup, I mean, you can't do anything about that, but actually the mistakes or the success depends on what you do after the breakup, not before. Now, the elephant in the room, the rebound, if they are dating someone. Three months, if they date someone within three months after the breakup, we can consider a rebound, more or less. Um, is it a longer relationship? You know, have, we, have they been together for 10 years? Maybe it's not a rebound anymore. <laughs> this actually can be a great thing if they are dating someone. Because while they are dating that person, and there are a few reasons why they date that person, they will assess and compare themselves with you. They will compare a strong relationship. And this is what I assess in the quiz, whether your relationship was strong enough to work with my strategies and, and, and my coaching um, practice. They're going to compare this with someone that they just met, someone that they may be uh, attractive physically, but don't really have the same connection, don't have the same values, didn't build the same stuff. This is why rebound relationship don't last because they are just there to help your ex cope with their feeling of being alone, their feeling of uh, coping with the, the pain of the breakup or just because they want a, a self-esteem boost or just to make you jealous and make you react. So what about you on your end? You know, are you, wanna, are you interested in other people? Show that you're happy for them as well. It's very important for you not to show that you're jealous, not to show that you're angry. You just accept and you just sort of play the game, knowing that more likely to fail. This couple is more likely to fail than to succeed. Seven, are they ready to lose you? 70% of the people who break up are not sure about their decisions. Three quarters of people, when they decide to end the relationship, when you ask them, they say, I'm not so sure, but I feel like it's the right decision. I'm not so sure. I still have strong feelings for that person. 
75% will say, I still have strong feelings for that person, but I can't take it anymore. And so your ex wants this to work. You know, deeply, they have feelings for you. You've created some stuff. You had projects. I'm pretty sure you had projects for the future together. And so deep inside, they didn't want it to, to end. So it's your turn to prove them wrong. Three sort of strategy or things you have to do right now. Not to be too available. Um, in other words, if you're too needy, if you're too clingy, you're not sexy, you're not attractive. So you need to create that attraction. You need to be that attractive magnet by doing the no contact and by also working on yourself. Being attractive physically, emotionally, because it's mostly emotionally that it works. Emotionally, how can you be more empathetic? How can you understand your ex when you reach out? How can you put yourself in their shoes? How can you change your behavior, uh, the way you see things, the way you communicate with your ex? How can you change your lifestyle so it matches what they're after in their vision of life and couple or family? It's also an opportunity to change the narrative. We mentioned those voices uh, in the head when they send those mixed signals. It's an opportunity for you to change the narrative. They have that story of that breakup. They have a story of your relationship. It's different than yours. You have to align your vision, convince them that actually what you see is the right things. And obviously it's not so much about you're right and they're wrong. There's <laughs> of course a point in the middle where you need to meet. That's what I do with my clients is I help them change the narrative, change what their ex is thinking. It's not about who they are, it's about the perception they have of them. It's really about how they can express their need, express what they want, um, and understand their psychological um, states and, and dynamic in the, in the couple. Now it's really time to take action. <laughs> Check out previous videos from the series if you just broke up with your ex, if you want to learn about the, sh the thing you should be doing right now, right after the breakup, or it's, if it's very recent, you learned a lot of tools and strategies um, for you. If you're not sure about your chances, because obviously I can't shoot hours of video, it would be too boring, <laughs> give me a call or a WhatsApp. And if I feel that there's uh, actually no chance at all, I will tell you. Um, and then last but not least, you can create your own compass. So what I mean by that, you can rate from one to 10, bad to good, um, on these five things. How positive your ex sees you, uh, your attraction level, your progress, your mindset, and the tone of the messages you get from your ex. So obviously these are objective ratings, but what is important is not the score right now. The score right now is a snapshot. I want you to score um, your compass on these points today and look at this score in a week's time, in two weeks time and look whether you're progressing in the right direction, whether that the tone you, you have, the, the message you get from your ex is different, is improving. It's really about the improvement. We don't really care so much about the rating, it's we care about the evolution. Okay, so you can use that compass to really also uh, feel more confident about the process because it's a process, because there's a beginning and then the end, and the end is to get back with your ex. But don't think it's gonna happen overnight. It's gonna, not gonna happen in a week. It takes more time. So you need to really use your compass to track the progress, feel better about progressing. If you feel that actually you're not progressing, you're in the wrong direction, you can, this method helps you to understand what went wrong. Maybe it's the tone of the messages. So what can I do? to address this. Um, maybe it's your progress. Maybe you feel that you're not learning anymore. So what are the resources that you need to address this point? And by tracking that is the best way to achieve your goal, which is to get back with your ex. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to comment. And you can also, and please, you can also like the video and subscribe to watch my other videos. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. I get my ex back .com. Everyone deserves a second chance.